Welcome to the Paul Robeson Center for the Arts. I'm guest curator here at the Arts Council of Princeton in Princeton, New Jersey. My name is Rebecca Kelly. I'm a storyteller and visual artist. Um, and I'd like to share some stories with you about this wonderful art. Let's start with Leslie Haas. Um, Leslie Haas's piece came to us from the Revealing Culture exhibition at the Smithsonian International Museum in Washington, D.C. Um, Leslie's a papermaker. Uh, her work has been known uh, in Germany, and she came to the state several years ago after a divorce. Uh, this piece is the emotional result of uh, her experience, um, thus the title, Raw Suffering of a Woman. It's made with tool, with New York Times, women's wear daily, and handmade paper flax. Donna McCullough's work um, is welded, made of steel. You know, Donna says that women are perceived as fragile creatures. Her pieces indicate otherwise. They're strong, they're made of steel, they have a steely resolve. This particular piece was inspired by Joni Mitchell's song, Don't Interrupt the Sorrow, which Donna was listening to as she created this piece, named after the goddess Anima. This piece was created for raw beauty. In Pregnant, Leslie Ponce uses the underrepresented medium of crochet. Crochet is often a denigrated uh, women's art. Um, it refers to perhaps the sweatshop era of women sewing for very little money, and also crochet, knitting, embroidery is considered an upper middle class pastime. Here, Leslie makes crochet both industrial and sophisticated. Her work speaks to regeneration with the balls. These are wooden balls that are wrapped in metal. Um, there's a lightness to the piece, and this piece really speaks to the title, Raw Beauty, with both its strength and its lightness. It seems like the piece is almost floating from the sky. Carol Cole is a dumpster diver from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I worked with her in the show at Bucks County Community College at the gallery, the Hicks Art Center, um, where she used recycled materials there as well. Um, Carol and I collaborated on the title of this exhibition, Raw Beauty. She also created this piece in specific for Raw Beauty, Life Force. It's a powerful piece. It's made with fence posts from chain link fence, fences, from red crayons, from, you can see Carol's um, paper making in the base. Um, she also used maple syrup spigots. Uh, she was in a junk shop and the um, woman who was selling these said, you can have them all for free if you'll take the whole bucket of it. So the way Carol works is like many of the artists in Raw Beauty, the materials determine the work rather than the concept. No ornament so precious as the labor of their hands was done by Miriam Scher. Miriam Scher is from Brooklyn, New York. She is an internationally renowned book artist. As you can see in this piece, she pushes the art of the book beyond boundaries to the edge. It's cutting edge work. Um, Miriam found these gloves on the streets of New York and others found out about Miriam's project and sent her lost gloves from all over the world. Each glove represents the life of a man, a woman, or a child. It's very narrative um, and she elevates the work by spraying it with gold. It's beaded. It looks both Egyptian and medieval. It's got the colors of the art of Egypt, ancient Egypt with gold and blue. The embroidery shows a high level of craft, patience, resilience, 
Um, and this speaks to the everyday experience of women. She elevates the sewing, the taking of the everyday, the mending that women do, and makes it a very special and spiritual object. Hannah Fink uses found object in her work. This is a series of shoes in the past uh, Hannah has done work with undergarments, which she reconstructs and deconstructs. Um, my favorite is brush. Hannah took a dog brush that she found on the street, and this looks like, hmm, perhaps a little metal that she found. It's wired and floats. Pearly is fit for Cinderella. Who wore this shoe? It's coated with wax, very protected. Um, Hannah's work speaks to the title raw in raw beauty. All of her work has a real raw finish to it. It's humorous, it floats, It looks like all of these objects could be invited to a fairy princess's ball. Like Miriam Scher's work, Elizabeth Mackey's piece, Bed of Rapunzel, is also a book. This was created at Women's Studio Workshop. It's handmade paper made from corn husks. I have admired Elizabeth Mackey's work for years. I'm a book artist and a storyteller, and um, the story really speaks to me. Um, while in Germany, Elizabeth researched first edition books, um, fairy tales, the Grimm's, the deep, dark, ugly secrets of Rapunzel. Um, we get the edited versions in America, and this particular book, it's part of a large series, refers to the bed of Rapunzel that the pregnant mother longed for. The piece speaks to the witch mother and the trap daughter, a theme that often resonates with women today. Leo Sewell grew up next to a dump, and his work reflects his childhood pastime of going through the dump, as well as working with his father. Leo is a founding member of the Dumpster Divers of Philadelphia. Leo's never taken an art class, but he has a master's degree from the University of Delaware in art history. His knowledge of art history is evident in Venus de Junco. The title refers to his muse, Venus de Milo. Um, it's armored, it's protected, it's made of various brass objects welded together. You can see uh, coats of arms, you can see knights, you can see ladies. It's an imaginative, whimsical piece that invites many repeated views.